Okay, Shalom. This is Prince Shema. I want to start giving all praise to do to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, and respect and honor to all you brothers out there scattered abroad, pushing this word with sincerity and truth out of the vibration of Mashiach Yahweh Shah. Okay, continue to stay focused. This is um back on Hosea chapter two. Okay, the breakdown. And um, before we get into that, start on Hosea chapter 2. I want to go to Hosea 12 and 10. Hosea chapter 12, verse 10. I have also spoken by the prophets, and I have multiplied visions and used similitudes by the ministry of the prophets. Right. And the reason why I wanted to bring that out, because this whole book of Hosea is a similitude. Okay. Um, it gives you an understanding of how a man may have compassion for a woman and he really truly loves her and the woman can miss or hoard him, okay, with other men. Now, using similar tools is the same thing as with the nation of Israel sleeping with having many lovers. And the men that she's sleeping with would be symbolic to all the philosophies and the customs of the heathen. Okay? So I just wanted to bring that point out. Okay, so let's get into Hosea chapter 2. Say ye unto your brethren, am I, and to your sisters, Ruhama. Now, when you look that up, we remember we brung out um, the first chapter, okay, Hosea chapter 1. We brung out Loruhama means not pitied, okay? And then we look, and then the word in chapter 1, and Laomi meant not my people. Now, when you go back into chapter 2, you say, am I, and your sister's Ruhama, okay? It means that the um, Ama means you are my people. Okay, see how the Lord is switching it up, even though we being going, we going, um, Israel is going off. Okay, and Rohama means mercy. Now, attain mercy, and, and Ama means now you're my people. But in verse one, it was Law Ama, mean you weren't my people. So this is the Lord showing His His grace and mercy on Israel, backsliding old Israel. Okay. All right. So now let's go to verse two. Plead with your mother and plead, for she is not my wife, neither am I her husband. Let her therefore put away her whoredoms out of her sight and her adulteries from between her breasts. Okay. Stop doing what you're doing. Stop committing whoredom. Let's go to Isaiah 50, verse 1. That says the Lord, this is Isaiah 50, verse 1. That says the Lord, where is the bill of your mother's divorcement, whom I have put away? Or which of my creditors is it to whom I have sold you? Behold, for your iniquities have you sold yourself, and for your transgression is your mother put away. Okay? Now, the reason why that's important, because that's in the law. What happened in the law? Let's go to Deuteronomy 24 and 1. Concerning that. Deuteronomy is the second law. Deuteronomy 24 and 1. Deuteronomy 24 and 1. When a man have taken a wife and married her, and it come to pass that she find no favor in his eyes, because he have found some uncleanness in her. Okay, so that's spiritual as far as um, Israel. We are unclean. Okay, so he gave us a bill of divorce. Okay, for some uncleanness in her, then let him write her a bill of divorcement and give it in her hand and send her out of his house. And when she is departed out of his house, she may go and be another man's wife. 
Hasn't Israel played the harlot with many lovers? Has not Israel played a harlot with many lovers? Yes, she has. Verse 3. And if the latter husband hate her and write her a bill of divorcement and give it in her hand and send her out of his house, or if the latter husband died, which took her to be his wife, her former husband would send her away, may not take her again to be his wife. After that, she is defiled. Is not Israel defiled? The similar to sleeping with many lovers. After that, she is defiled. For that is an abomination before the Lord, and thou shalt not cause the land of sin which the Lord, thy power, had given thee for inheritance. Okay? So that's why I wanted to use that. That's another allegory, similar to. Okay? So even though we did all that, the Lord is still forgiving us. Okay? So I don't want to hear no um, nobody ignorant saying that, oh, um, Israel is done away with and those laws don't pertain, okay? As they say, that salvation's for everybody to bring them in the fold. We don't want to hear that. It's still showing that the Lord forgave us, okay? And that shows that in verse 2, in, in, in Hosea chapter 2. Okay, let's go to verse 3. Lest I strip her naked, Hosea 2 and 3, Lest I strip her naked and set her as in a day that she was born and make her as a wilderness and set her like a dry land and slay her with the thirst. Let's go to Jeremiah 13, 22. Jeremiah 13, 22. And if thou say in thy heart, wherefore come these things upon me? For the greatness of thy iniquity are thy skirts discovered and the hills made bare. Right. So we can use that right now. Why is all these things taking place? Why is this happening to us? Why is Israel in a low state of condition? Okay. Why is Israel in hell? Because hell is a condition. Why is it like that? Because Israel is a home-born slave, according to um, Hosea 4 and 6. Okay? And if there, and if thou say in thy heart, wherefore come these things upon me? For the greatness of, our, of thine iniquity are thy skirts discovered, and thy hills made bare. Yeah, your, your sin is going to be uncovered, being that you um, in the bed with all your lovers, all your different gods, and embracing that filthy doctrine, the doctrine of pig feet or pig fat, okay? Hmm. Go back to Hosea 2, verse 4. And I will not have mercy upon her children, for they be the children of whoredoms, for their mother have played the harlot. Remember, Israel is symbolic to a woman, okay? And the and 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 husband is um, Yahweh, okay? She that conceived him have done shamefully, for she said, I will go after my lovers that give me my bread and my water, my wool and my flax and my oil and my drink, okay? Yeah. Her lovers are those gods, those idols. Let's, let's get a precept, Ezekiel 23 and 5. Ezekiel 23 and 5. Ezekiel 23 and 5. In Ahalo played the harlot when she was mine, and she dotted on her lovers, on the Assyrians, her neighbors. Mm-hmm. Okay. Verse 6, Hosea 2 and 6. Therefore, behold, I will hedge up thy way with thorns and make a war 
that she shall not find her path. Right, and that's to this very day. Okay? Israel don't, Israel don't know if they're coming or going as a nation. You have a few great men that's on the highway or byway, you know what I'm saying, that's pushing this word with sincerity and truth to wake up our people. But even though all our people is not going to get it, that's why when we on the highways and byway, according to, um, I believe, Isaiah 68 in verse 1, cry aloud, spare not, lift up that voice like a trumpet. That trumpet is this Bible. That trumpet is this word. Okay, that trumpet is this guidance that the Lord is calling his people in. You know what I'm saying? The ones that he predestined to call in from the beginning. Okay? And they're going to be doing this work. That's why it says the prophet is subjected to a prophet. Is that not true? Because the same prophets back then that was prophesying, doing the Lord's word, they would be here doing the same thing. Okay? Now let's go to... um. It says, therefore, behold, I will, this is Hosea 2 and 6. Therefore, behold, I will hedge up thy way with thrones and make a war that shall not find her paths. Right. Are we not lost? It says, is Israel a homeborn slave? Why is he? Okay. Because you don't got this book. You left your true power. You left your, your um, power charge. Okay. And you went to other gods where there is no power. Give me um, Isaiah chapter 5. Isaiah chapter 5, <clears throat> verse 1. Now will I sing to my well-beloved a song of my beloved touching his, vi his vineyard. My well-beloved have a vineyard and a very fruitful hill. Okay? My well-beloved is Israel, the nation of Israel. Okay? Verse 2. And he fenced it and gathered out the stone thereof and planted it with the choicest vine and built a tower in the midst of it. And also made a wine press therein, and he looked that it should bring forth grapes, and it brought forth wild grapes. Right? What is our people right now? Our people is wild, discombobulated, confused. Okay. Last one hired, first one fired. They don't got nothing here. Okay. Because they were already had, they was already set up in a fruitful garden. The garden, when you think about it, it's nourished, it's watered right, all the stones and rises out of it, okay? And it's growing healthy, because back in the ancient time, when you had, um, you was considered doing well when you had your crops and your garden was growing, um, um, growing well, the garden was looking real green, Pastor, nice. And at that time, the water and the, 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 the dew that would come off the ground, you know what I'm saying, come from off the ground, it would make, and, and the Lord would, um, he would rain in that proper season for those, um, for that garden to be nourished. Okay? And then it says, um, yeah, they brought forth wild grapes. In verse 3, and now all the inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge, I pray you, betwixt me and my vineyard. What could have I, check this out, verse 4. What could have been done more to my vineyard that I have not done in it? Yeah, what could? What else could I do? The Lord is saying, I done nourish it, planted it, set it up. You know what I'm saying? Give us its proper rain, its proper new, um, nourishment at its proper time. What more can I do? Okay, what could have been done more to my vineyard that I have not done in it? Wherefore, when I look, that it should bring forth grapes, it brought forth wild grapes. It did not produce what it was supposed to produce. Okay? You make a vineyard, it was supposed to produce what? Or if you make grapes, plant grapes, it's supposed to be to, to grow what? Grapes, not wild grapes. Okay? Verse 5, and now, go to, I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will take away the hedge thereof. Yeah, take away that protection. Okay? And 
it shall be eaten up and break down the wall thereof, and it shall be trodden down. Is not Israel trodden down? To this very day? Is not Israel in captivity to this very day? Yes, we are. Verse 6. And I will lay it waste. It's, yeah, Jerusalem is messed up right now. Okay? Our home is messed up. And I will lay it waste. It shall not be pruned nor dead, but there shall come up briars and thorns. And I will also command the clouds that, see? And I will also command the clouds that the rain, no rain upon it. So that vineyard symbolically that we're supposed to be in, you know what I'm saying? There's no rain. Okay? So it's, it, it's like a desert place. Okay? No, no fruits and green pastures or green vegetables can grow there. Thus says the Lord. And why is that? Because Israel left his first estate serving the true power. Okay? Verse 7. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel and the men of Judah, his pleasant plan. And he looked for judgment, but behold, oppression for righteousness, but behold, a cry. OK. Now, let's go for another precept to that. Lamentation chapter three. Lamentation chapter 3. He have hedged me about that I cannot get out. Yeah, we all messed up. He have made my chain heavy. Indeed, is not our chain heavy? Because he took that gate around us, that protection. Okay? Why? For you, for Israel, having many lovers. Israel said, I'm going to go to my lovers to get my bread and my wine. Okay? And that's it. And, and that's hey. And I'm just keep it real. Don't that sound like when when a woman um is not getting her way or is not getting the the the, the material things of this world? Okay, it's not coming for her, right? So what she do? She follow the philosophy. She go to another man, you know, and see and get those things that she attained. Okay. Oh, I'm gonna go to my lovers to get it. Okay, and then when that lover don't produce. Okay, what she do? She try to come back to the old guy that she first was with. And that's going to bring that out in chapter 2. Verse 8. This is Lamentation 3, verse 7 to 9. Also, when I cry and shout, he shout out my prayer. Right. He have enclosed my ways with whom stone he have made my paths crooked. Yeah, is Israel's path not crooked? There we go. It's only one way, and that's to seek the Lord, and that's to be faithful to the Lord. Go back to the origin word of Amon, trust, believe. And she shall, verse 7, Hosea 2 and 7, and she shall follow after her lovers, but she shall not overtake them, and she shall seek them, but shall not find them. Then shall she say, I will go and return to my first husband, for then was it better with me than now. See? The shit don't go her way. You know what I'm saying? With, with, with her lovers, she come back to her first husband. And think about um, Israel as a whole sometimes. You know, nobody thinks about the Lord. You know what I'm saying? When things is going okay. You know, nobody thinks about the Lord. But as soon as shit start going, um, getting twisted for them, or they start going through some kind of condition, all of a sudden, they know the Lord. Oh, Lord, help me. Get me out of this condition. Now you want to know the Lord. Okay. That's crazy. Okay. Where we at? And she shall follow after her lovers, but she shall not overtake them. And she's my friend Calic and I here. And a moment, I'm gonna step.
step into my office here at my home and, and on my um, computer and show you exactly you know, how it is that I went from barely sleeping by a coffee shop to creating a life that I love. It revolves around the things that I'm passionate about. And it says, and she shall follow after her lovers, but she shall not overtake them, and she shall seek them, but she shall not find them. Then shall she say, I will go and return to my first husband, for then was it better with me than now. Let's go to Isaiah 54 and 8. Isaiah 54 and 8. Let's start at seven. Let's start at verse six. Nope, let's start at verse five. Isaiah 54 and five. For thy maker is thy husband. The Lord of hosts is his name. And thy redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. The power of the whole earth. The God of the whole earth shall be, shall he be called. For the Lord have called thee as a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit. That's Israel. We not forsaken and grieved in the spirit to this very day for forsaking the Lord and playing a whoredom. So right now, Israel is nothing but a prostitute. And all the heathens right now is, is, is just taking turns and jackalating in us. Sorry to sound graphic, but that's what it is. So Israel is defiled, unclean. When we bring you out in the law, Deuteronomy, about a wife divorcement if you find something unclean for, for um and how you could divorce her bill of divorcement so that's the same thing you know what i'm saying with israel that's that similitude that's that allegory okay read that again for the lord have called thee as a woman forsaken and grieved in the spirit and indeed israel is indeed uh, is grieving in the spirit look at a condition my people and a wife of youth when thou was refused says the god verse 7 for a small moment have I forsaken thee? But with great mercies will I gather thee. Right? Remember in Hosea 2? Um, uh, am I? And um, what was the other word? Um, Ruhama. So one of them, am I, mean, I believe, or one means mercy, and the other one means you are my people. Okay? But with great mercy will I gather thee. In a little wrath, I had hid my faith from thee for a moment, but with everlasting kindness, I will have mercy on thee, says the Lord, thy Redeemer. All right? So Israel ain't forsaken, but we got to get back right. We got to do right. You know better, you do better. Okay? It's actions. If you can't be a prophet or, or preaching out on the streets because you got a condition, that's okay. But you got you to gotta participate. You know, you got to do some kind of work in the Lord. You know, the Lord requires of something of you. Okay, so do what you could do because the Lord knows what you could do. But if you are a man that's um, well trained and you can lift weights and you can jog for miles, get your ass out of the, the, the from behind the computer and get out there and do something. Okay. Before you can start judging other people, but you being a computer gangster. What it say? All these networks and these computers, niggas walk around like they some shooters. When I see them in their face, they be like, well, how it goes? See them? When I see them in their face, they're like, what's up now? Or something like that. Talk that shit that you said through your computer, computer gangsters. Okay. But you're judging everybody else. And you ain't doing the work. You're not even trying. You don't even have no website up or anything like that. Then you got the niggas that's sitting there talking about brothers that's doing the work or participating. But they're not participating in the way you're participating in. So now you, you, you're bringing other brothers down. And you're supposed to be a prime example or leaders of Israel to upbuild. It's easy to destroy, but how many can lift up and build up? Because the key thing in this whole thing that we learn is repentance. Okay? Everybody could turn around.
Okay, where we at? Um, verse 8, Hosea 2 and 8. For she did not know that I gave her corn and wine and oil and multiplied her silver and gold, which they prepared for Balal. Right. The Lord gave us all the things that made us fine. If we stayed with the Lord, we would have been the, the heads. And now Israel is the tail. Okay. Let me go to that real quick. Twenty-eight. Where is it at? Yeah, let's go to Deuteronomy twenty-eight and twelve. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasures the heaven to give the rain unto thy land in his season and to bless all the work of thy hand and thou shalt lend unto many nations and thou shalt not borrow. Oh boy, we don't see that right now. We borrowing. Okay? We borrowing from the nation. And remember, that's deep because when you borrow, when you borrow from somebody, you're kind of like a slave. <laughs> We supposed to lend, not borrow. We borrow from the nations. That's how low our people is. The lowest condition they in. We the borrowers. We supposed to be the lenders. And the Lord shall make thee the head, right? And not the tail. We're the tail. We're the opposite. So even back then it shows you that we didn't keep these laws, statutes, and commandments. Because we dare show us the tail. And thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. <laughs> We're beneath, not above. If that thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy power, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them. Yeah, we ain't doing that. Now let's go back to um, for she, verse 8. For she did not know that I gave her corn and wine and oil and multiplied her silver and gold, which they prepared for Balel. Let's go to Isaiah 1 and 3. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 3. The ox know his owner. And the ass his master's crib. Even the ox is a, is, a, is a strong animal. Okay. And the ass his master's crib. But Israel. The ox know his owner. And the ass his master's crib. One is a st um, strong animal. A stubborn animal. And one is just a dumb animal. Okay. But even so. They both know who gives them food. They both know who gives them water. They both know who their master is. And that's how. And that's an animal. But Israel does not consider. <laughs> but Israel does not know my people do not consider what does it say oh go to verse 4 oh a sinful nation a people laden with iniquity a seed of evildoers children that are corruptors they have forsaken the Lord they have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger they are going away backwards they yeah, backsliding Israel then it says, verse 5, why should you be stricken anymore? Why should you be going through anything else no more? Then got punished and punished and punished. Why should you be stricken anymore? So the ox knows his masters and, and the ox even know who feeds them. Animals know who feed them. A dog, you got to make dog food or whatever. The dog know who his master is. He ain't stupid. Are we not more smarter than the animals? More intelligent than them? In this case, I guess not. <laughs> Ezekiel 16, 19. Ezekiel 16, 19. 
My meat also which I gave thee, fine flour and oil and honey, wherewith I fed thee. Thou hast even set it before them for a sweet savior, and thus it was, says the Lord Yahweh. That's it. That's why it says, for she did not know that I gave her corn and wine and oil and multiplied her silver and gold, which they prepared for Balel. The Lord gave us all those things. OK, and then we took it and repaired it for Baal. OK, an idol God. God made a wooden stone. Who made wooden stone the most high? Go to verse nine, Hosea two and nine. Therefore will I return and take away my corn in the time thereof, and of my wine in the season thereof, and I will recover my wool and my flax given to cover her nakedness. He'll take it back. And now I will discover her lewdness in the sight of her lovers, and none shall deliver her out of my hand. Verse 11. And I will also cause all her mirth to cease, her feast days, her new moons, and her Sabbaths, and all her Solomon's feasts. Yeah. We don't even, a lot of us don't even know about the high holy days. And don't even say that you keep, the ones that do know, don't say that you're keeping it all the way to the um 100% because you're not. Because that's why we said that we righteous, we rehearsing the righteous acts. We're doing it to the best of our ability. Okay? And to the wonderful counsel to come back and going to show us how to do it. Everything going to be set right. So you holy rollers that think you could judge other people, you know what I'm saying? Even these highly ho these high holy days, you're not even serving them right or participating in the right. Okay? For the high roll, the, you holy rollers. <laughs> Give me Isaiah 1. Isaiah 1, where's that at? Let's go to... Here's what the Lord say. Let's go to... I'm going to jump around in this. Let's go to Isaiah 1. Let's go... Oh, here it is. 1 and 13. 1 and 12. When you come to appear before me, who have required this at your hands to tread my courts, bring no more vain oblations Incense is an abomination unto me. The new moons are Sabbath. The calling of assemblies I cannot away with. The Lord said, "Bring that, get that away from me." Okay, instead of bringing him sweet um, odor, it's a stinky odor, and the Lord don't want that. It's more like doo doo. Okay, and I cannot away with. It is iniquity, even your Solomon meetings, ooh, your new moons and your appointed feasts. My soul hate. You see that? Because niggas' hearts is not real. Okay? Even when you attain this knowledge, you're still being wicked inside of your heart. Okay? You, a lot of Israel today is, is no better than the churches. Link them up. Link the churches up. The same thing. If you, I don't know if you've ever been a, a, a part of camps or whatever like that. They got this, a certain of them got their own doctrine they believe in and they put in that might not be according to the scriptures, but you're supposed to follow that. Okay, certain of them don't even believe in the name of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. They say Most High Christ blessed. Okay, once you know, uh, once you come to another understanding of the Lord, and you learn the Hebrew to the best of your ability, you know what I'm saying. You're supposed to know that. You're supposed to know that. That's name. That's powers in name. You know, there's many gods, but there's one that stands up. The true. All I seen. Okay. And that's Yahweh. And then it says. Look at that. Verse 14. Your, your new moons and your appointed feasts. My soul hate. They are trouble unto me. I am worried to bear them. I can't take it no more. And that's for those who know that they're Israel. And those who don't know that they're Israel. Those of Israel that's in the Gentile state are not mine. 
and those who are Israel to still being wicked. Damn. Damn. Wash you, make you clean, put away the evil of your doing from before my eyes. Repent. That's what the Lord is saying. Get yourself together. That's why you're, it's troublesome to him because you know your heart ain't right. He says, render your heart, not your garment. A lot of you look good on the, on the outside, but inside you rotten to the core. And the Lord going to judge you for that. Every man's going to get their judgment according to what they're doing. And also, too, just to throw this in, the churches. Yeah, we're going to get the, 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 the heathen churches. Just because your church is big and you have millions of members, it doesn't mean that the Lord has blessed you. It could just mean you connected with the system. Okay? That's why you're being so-called um, blessed. Because people think the more people they have, the numbers of people they have, that they're blessed. You know what I'm saying? Remember, this is a straight gate. Only one, according to 2nd Ezra 7, verse 6 to 8, it's only one man that could walk through this at a time. It's the straight gate. Not everybody can come. The broad is narrow. No, the broad is spacious. Salakia, I'm just paraphrasing it. And many that walk into is the destruction. So the broad gate is, is big and, 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 and um, broad, spacious. Okay? But that's destruction leading into that. So just because you got numbers and millions of people in your church don't make you right. You error not knowing the scriptures. You think, oh, we got a million members. We got a, and also we got a million subscribers. And think about it. When you get a lot of subscribers, you start getting a check for that. <laughs> You know, now ain't nothing wrong with that if you're doing that to get money to help your school or to help this word go out. You know what I'm saying? That's good. That's cool with that. A lot of you want to get them pockets so you can get those um, four locals. Okay? Where we at? The Lord said, verse 16, Hosea 1 and 16, wash you, make you clean. Put away the evil of your doing from before my eyes. Cease from doing evil. And when you look at that word, when it says, um, go to um, Isaiah 1 and 5, I just want to make this. Why should you be stricken anymore? When you look up that word stricken, it's nakah in the Hebrew. And it means rebellious. Why will you continue to be rebellious? Hard-headed, stiff neck. Israel's stiff neck niggas. And then when it says Latin, it means cabal, shame. So let's go to that. Just to go over there. See what you do. Where's that? Mm-hmm. Where is it at? Boy, I want to get that point. Oh, verse 4, Isaiah 1 and 4. A sinful nation, a people Latin with iniquity, cabal, shame, a seed of evildoers. So our people cabal and shame. Okay. Another thing too, our garments that we wear, you know, we got this from from the um it's not supposed to be fancy. You know, what we got is what we got got. You know. We in a time of mourning, not a time of celebrating. Okay? So don't judge no man about his garment. Niggas are so simple, man. Simple minded. Now, let's go. That's enough on that. I just wanted to show you that, man. And listen to this one more part. This whole book, this whole chapter was one of my favorite chapters. Oh, where is it at? 
Isaiah 1. Listen to this, verse 6. I'm going to start at 5. Why should you be stricken anymore? Okay? Rebellious. You will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick and the whole heart faint. Yeah, Israel is sick because we're playing a hard on. We're getting sick by sleeping with all those lovers. Okay? Getting HIV, chlamydia, gonorrhea, STDs, sleeping with these lovers. But when we was with the Most High and, and on by His side, we was um, clean. We were pure. But now that we was sleeping and opening up our quiver to every lover, you know what I'm saying? Now we got STDs. We got disease. We can't get up. The plagues, the judgment is on us. Mm. That's it. You read it, make you disgusted. Therefore, will I return and take away my corn in the time thereof, and my wine in the season thereof. Hosea two and nine, and will recover my wool and my flax given to cover her nakedness. And now will I discover her lewdness in the sight of her lovers, and then shall deliver her out of my hand. Verse 11, I will also cause all her mirth to cease, her feast days, her new moon, her Sabbaths, and all her Solomon feast days. Yeah, remember we just read that in Isaiah 1. And her fig trees, they are, she has said, they are my rewards that my lovers have given me. And I will make them a forest, and the beasts of the field shall eat them. And I will visit upon her the days of Balaam, wherein she burnt incense to them. And she decked herself with her earrings and her jewels. And she went after her lovers and forgot me, says the Lord. Yeah. See that? Therefore, behold, I will allure her and bring her into the wilderness and speak comfortably unto her. And I will give her her vineyard from thence and the valley of Acha for a door of hope. And she shall sit, and she shall sing there, as in the days of her youth, and as in the days of when she came up out of the land of Egypt. Now I like that verse because that it says the um, verse fifteen, and I will give her her vineyard from thence in the valley of Acha for a door of hope. Because when you look up that word Acha, it, it means trouble. Okay, and let's read a little bit about that to give you better insight. This is Joshua. Um, 726, but I'm going to start somewhere, a little bit up above to give you the inside of the story. Joshua 7, 26. We're going to start at 19. And Joshua said unto Achim, my son, give me, I pray thee, glory to the Lord God of Israel, and make confessions unto him, and tell me now what thou hast done. I hid it not from me. I hide it not from me. And Achan answered Joshua and said, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord, Yahweh of Israel, and thus and, and thus have I done. Right. Well, let me read a little bit more. When I saw among the spoils a godly, a good, sorry, Shalakia, when I saw among the spoils of goodly Babylonian's garment, and 200 shekels of silver and a wedge of gold of filthy shekels weight, then I coveted them and took them, and behold, they are hid in the earth in the midst of my tent and the silver under it. Now, when you read this whole story and you go into that, they were supposed to go and, and conquer the, the, have war with them, but not take anything from them. Okay, because the Lord provided for them, and He gave them specific orders to do that. This nigga right here, what he did, he took the garments and, and the things, the idols that he did in conquering it and put it under his tent. You know what I'm saying? So meanwhile, while he did that, Israel kept going to war and they kept losing. A lot of men died for that. And Joshua was like, what's going on? All right. This is a, this is a, um, a story of, of 
of a selfish ass nigga.